All right, folks, so we have made the canards in the last video, and now let's work on this rear nozzle. I think this is going to be kind of a cool thing to work on. I'm not going to make a real aircraft nozzle, of course, because, one, I don't even know if I fully know how they work, and two, it'd be really complicated, but we can make a wonderful representation here. I'm going to start by making a plane relative to our uh, XY plane, and I'm going to turn my distance down here. So let's go to the right plane and see if we can get this plane to land right on the end of our nozzle in the sketch picture. It looks like I might want to say 7.6, maybe let's try 7.5. That's pretty close, 7.6, 7. Six, seven. Ooh, I think that's going to be adequately close. And we'll close that, All right? So now I've got this nice plane here. And next, I'm going to highlight my back face and activate a 2D sketch. And again, this is the face of my plane, not on the plane that I've just made. I'm going to highlight this edge. We'll uh, convert that because I want the center point. So reference figure with maintained association. And I'm going to make a center point arc. And I'm going to make a curved slot shape. Ugh. I think that'll do. I'll choose a coincident relation here to here and here to here. Now we'll choose tangent and make sure that we are tangent between every arc, right? So there and there. I think that's already tangent down there, and that's already tangent, so so we're good everywhere, right? We have four tangent symbols. We're going to choose horizontal and make sure that these two points are indeed horizontal. We're going to choose an equal and make sure that these two arcs are equal. And of course, we're overdefined, so I think that that equal is contained in our tangents. Next. I want to make sure that I'm equal with this arc and my imported point, right? And now I'll give this a dimension. Let's, we want this to be relatively small. What if I give this a radius of 5 thou, right? 0 0.005. And that looks to be about kind of a nice proportional thickness, I think. And then I'm going to choose a center line and I can choose the center of my arc over here, going to the center and the center line of my arc over here. Right, and now we're going to say dimension. And let's say I want to have 20 um, little fins on that nozzle. I can say open parenthesis 360 divided by 20, right? And then let's say I want to have a quarter of a degree spacing between every fin. Then I can say uh, minus 0.5, and that will give me a quarter of a degree on each side of the nozzle. So we've made that angle, and of course, it looks like I need to uh, add in a nice little coincident uh, <laughs> relation there so that that will happen. There we go. So that, that's at the spacing that we want. So let's deactivate that. Next, I want to make a sketch to terminate my fin on the plane that we've just made that references the back of our nozzle. So I'm going to activate a sketch here and reset my view to go to the other side. And let's do the same thing as before. We're going to import, create a reference figure, and we're going to go here, maintain association, done. Uh, same thing, an arc that references the center here. We're going to make another arc. Oh, and that came up kind of funny, so we'll do that one more time. We're just making an arc. There we go, that kind of snaps to all these points. I want to choose a tangent relation now, and we're going to make sure that these are tangent. That's already tangent there, so tangent again, and tangent again, right? So now we have all tangents. We're going to choose a horizontal point from here to here. You can do loft to a different thickness, maybe 0.004, right? Maybe they'll get a little bit thinner at the ends, but 
Uh, I guess that'll be okay. And then I'll give this a radius, maybe uh, 0 0.22, maybe 2125. I'm going to guess that that's going to be the dimension that we want to taper down to. I'll check that in a second. And then I want to have it come down to the exact same spacing so you have a consistent gap, which is kind of sharp, right? That means that these things are going to come down to different dimensions but have the same gap. Let's go to the dimension here and we're going to say, how about open parenthesis 360 divided by 20 minus 0.5. And of course, there is no coincidence, so I'll add my coincident constraint now. And that snapped us into a fully defined sketch. So if I take a look at my sketch from the side view, Yeah, you can see our sketch seems to hug right on top of that. So I think we're doing pretty good there. Next, we'll go to the history tree. And it looks like uh, <laughs> I have an extrusion that um, wasn't generated. So I'll generate to last feature. If, I'm, if, I, if it matters, I can, of course, move my sketches to a different order. I'm going to move sketch 38 and 39 down there if we just want to maintain the order in which we made this and then i'll choose uh, maybe i'll highlight sketch 38 additive loft that looks good i don't think i need to specify any tangents so there's my rear nozzle right there now i said i want 20 of these so let's do a circular pattern i'm going to pattern this nozzle and i can choose this oh it looks like i cannot choose this face as a center. So let me cancel that. In fact, I don't have a good circular reference, so I'm going to cheat. Uh, since I don't have an easy reference to uh, specify a center, I'll project the same edge to my sketch with maintained association as a reference figure, of course. And I'll give this a diameter of something like 0.45. And I actually, of course, need to make this coincident as well. So we'll deactivate. And then just for fun, I think it actually looked pretty cool to cut into that a little bit, right? Maybe I'll... That's a bit far, of course. Maybe I'll move that, you know, just in there. I've got sort of a deeper engine now and a nice circular face to reference off of, which that's kind of cool. We'll choose circular pattern. I'll choose this feature here. We'll choose the center being this face. And notice if I type in 20 here, um, it doesn't seem to make a difference. So I want to check this box here and that makes sure that I have um, all of those features at even spacing. I say OK, and that looks kind of like the nozzle on the back of the engine. So, that, oh man, that's that's looking a lot like a grip and now. That's cool. I love the way this looks. Good job, Saab. You've made a really awesome plane. Now let's add some weapons. So for weapons, how about I want to add a missile down the side here? Uh, and there's a number of ways to do this, so don't think that I like own the way to do this or something. Uh, but I think I'm going to grab from my top view a plane that runs through this side missile here. So I'll select this plane, or we'll activate a 2D sketch, and let's trace around this with a circle. Maybe I'll make that a bit larger, right? I'll give this a dimension, 0.125 how about? And maybe I can add a tangent relation right to this edge. That would be this missile. Uh, that In some platforms that will produce a zero thickness geometry, but in a Libre I think we're actually okay. Um, I'll choose a reference line that makes it easy to choose the center point and then I'll simply make this horizontal to constrain my sketch. 
or not. It looks like I didn't snap onto that center point and that's not a problem. I'll grab that center point again and now we should have that so we'll make this horizontal and we're fully defined. Let's deactivate the sketch. All right, I want to extrude the sketch. So we're going to say sketch 41. Uh, we'll hit the extrude button. We'll go from the top. Now, because I have a tangent relationship, this edge cannot really be filleted or chamfered. So we're going to find another way to work around that. Uh, that would be like a kernel issue. And I think that would be a kernel issue for SOLIDWORKS or FreeCAD or anything else, right? Because I constrain that really weird as sort of a representation of a missile without it being a realistic solid. So we're going to make this dual depth point, how about 525 and see where that puts us. And I actually want to choose dual depth while I'm at it. So that seems about right. Um, now, and I'll show you what, what we're getting, right? We're, I'm going to say fill it, and even something simple like 0 0.005, right? A small 5 thou, th 5 thou fill it. If I say apply, I get non-manifold edge or vertex in or, in or near blend. So we're going to close that. That's because this edge is tangent to that face. I don't think Solid, SolidWorks could fill it that or anything else. Uh, same thing with chamfers, if I try to chamfer it. So I'm going to extrude this again. And actually, actually I have to make a sketch. So <laughs> I'll activate a sketch. We'll go to our edge import. There, we've created a sketch figure. And I actually should have maintained association. So I'll do that once more. Maintain association as a sketch figure, and we come in fully defined. I'll do an extrude. We'll come through here, and let's go with a 45 degree draft angle. <laughs> Except I need to uh, make sure that I reverse that, right? So we'll uncheck outward. And there we have the sharp point of a quote unquote missile. Now, how, how do I get a 45 degree plane going through here? Well, my first step is to make an axis. And what I'll do is grab axis up here and I'm actually gonna get rid of my pre-selection and I'll choose my round face and that puts an axis right through my round face. And uh, now I want to make a plane that I can go 45 degrees because I need to make my fins on my missile. You can see how my fins are extending at like a 45 degree offset each. So grab my plane and I know I want my plane to reference my axis. And then I'll choose my right plane right there running right through the middle. And then I can choose an angle, let's say an angle of 45 degrees. And I'll reverse this. It seems intuitive to do it that way to me. And that gives us a nice plane to define our fins on. And this is going to be very freehand on my part. I'll activate a 2D sketch. Got a little autosave going on there. And I'm going to trace out what I think might look cool for a fin. Maybe right there. Again, I stress freehand. We'll come out to here, trying to keep to the picture. There and there. Yeah, that seems all right. So we'll deactivate the sketch and yeah, I think we're pretty golden here. Let's do an extrude. We'll make sure that this is symmetric to plane. So we're going to depth. Uh, 
but I'll call it mid-plane, that's better, 0 0.005, right, and there we have some fins. Now if I view exactly from the front, our uh, fin does not intersect with the wing there. So that's good. Now we need to use our axis again. Let's go with a circular pattern and we'll choose this extrude to pattern and we'll choose the axis as our center. We'll make this be uh, four instances and we'll choose even spacing over here. There it is, right? So we have nice draft on the front, just like that. Man, Libra does a good job. This is great. Next. I can choose to mirror this, or I can wait until the end and mirror everything all in one, which I think I will do. Uh, so our center plane is sitting, let's see, in the front here. I've got a plane that seems to run through sort of the top half of all of these missiles, but um, it seems to run deep enough that I can extrude from this plane to the wing and build the missiles around that uh, to have sort of a coherent, uh, consistent base between all the missiles. So we'll do that. I'm going to sketch on this plane, reset my view to kind of look underneath. All right, so in this sketch, uh, in the past I just made slot shapes and extruded them to the wing, but I think in this one, let's make it a little bit more interesting and fun. Let's go with an ellipse. And I'm gonna make three ellipses. Right, and I think I can use some reference lines to make an easy way of referencing these ellipses, right? And we're gonna choose equal on these sort of vertical heights. So now all these ellipses should have that same dimension and likewise equal between here and here and here. <laughs> so now we should have all three the same size. Now let's work on their orientation relative to each other. I want to make sure that these are, and I don't know if I evenly spaced the missiles out last time, I don't remember but it'd be a great idea this time. So I'm gonna choose a collinear relation between this line and let's choose an equal relation so that these are evenly spaced. So now I'll simply place this as to where it appears. It looks like these are pretty well evenly spaced. Good job to myself. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to say that that's pretty good. Everything else in this is eyeballed. Why not? Let's deactivate a sketch. I'll choose extrude. And we want to extrude. Use the two geometry option. So we're going to say two geometry. And we'll select the bottom of the swing as geometry. And there we have it. So we've got three evenly spaced hangers that we can put quote unquote missiles on. And it's kind of cool that they're elliptical. I think that that adds kind of a nice aerodynamic touch to it. So how do I start sketching on here? Well, I want to reference the center distance between all of these, and I think I can do some pretty simple uh, dimensions to figure that out. So I'm going to head back into my extrude sketch here. And since those are equal lines, I know that my equal spacing is going to be oh, 0.488149. That's kind of long, so let's say 0.49. Right? We'll just kind of round that up. And then how far am I off center? I'm at 0.49 and 0.858, so let's say 0.85. There we go, so we'll 0.85 and 
So we're going to make, uh, let's highlight our center plane now. I've highlighted an axis, so I'll clear that. There. There's my axis. And I want 0.85. So you can see that our, our plane now intersects the middle of that hanger. We're a little bit different than we are with the last missile, but I think that's just fine. Uh, I now want to reference this next plane and say uh, 0 0.49. And I'm going to check the box for multiple planes and choose one copy at 0.49, the same distance. We'll apply that. And now we, we have a plane intersecting here and here from the exact middle. So we'll start with my outside one and we'll activate a 2D sketch. From here maybe we'll make another narrow missile. The cylinder shape is pretty cool so we'll do one of that and this is totally just seeing what looks good. I think that looks really nice. I'm going to take this end line here and let's make that, uh, let's right click and make that for reference. And that way we can make kind of a nice tighter front end on it. I'm going to go with an arc from there to there. And I'll draw a line back to our center line. We'll make this horizontal. And we'll have this one sit relatively high under the wing. Maybe right there. So looking at it one more time, that doesn't look too bad. I have, uh, let's add one more vertical from there to the arc center point. Oh, looks like we've already got that, so that's good. We'll deactivate the sketch. Let's do a revolve. And our revolve axis will be that bottom line there. All right, so we're revolving around that. Not too shabby. A little smaller than the other missile. I don't think that's a bad thing. So we'll want to add some fins on that. And we can follow the same strategy as before. We'll add a center axis. We'll close. We'll choose a plane. I click on my axis. I'll click on my center plane here. And we'll throw in an angle of 45 degrees. So, go down to my tree, plane 68, it <laughs> looks like my latest plane. I bet your number is going to be a little bit different in case I've done some work off screen on this. We'll do a 2D sketch on this plane. And I will eyeball another fin that hopefully looks good. I think that's kind of cool. It kind of intersects with that holder, so we'll tilt that back a bit. Not bad. We'll deactivate. Let's extrude, and we'll extrude mid-plane. There we go. So if I view it from the back, yeah, I think we're looking really good. So we'll then go with a circular pattern. We'll pattern this fin around this center. 
Wham. Looks great. Let's do it again on the next plane, and maybe I'll do a different shape this time. I believe that's our plane. I have to view it from the back to be sure. That plane there will activate a 2D sketch. I'll make this a little bit larger. It probably makes sense to mount smaller stuff towards the outside of the wing and larger stuff towards the inside of the wing for a moment of inertia manu maneuverability, but that's just my speculation. We'll make a very large radius arc. I will add a horizontal constraint between these endpoints. And that's kind of preserving the same length on the missile, so that's pretty cool actually. I'll reset my view. And I think that makes for a pretty good diameter of a missile too. So for the, dif for the different shape, I'll go right there and we'll say deactivate, revolve, I'll choose my axis as this thing. And we have kind of a bomb looking thing sitting there, right? You know, I think bombs are a little bit more blunt on the front end. So Let's do that. I have to remove my horizontal constraint, and I like where that back end is sitting. Thus, I'll lock the back end. That's not bad. So that's about right. I'm going to leave that point kind of sharp, not quite tangent to vertical. I'll re-add my line in. That looks a bit more bombish, right? Uh, we'll deactivate. We might get an error. Nope, it, it did not error out. Moral of the story is you can make this however you wish. Uh, that's how I made mine. We'll go to the top, we'll give this a, well, how is the question, do I uh, create an axis, right? If I make an axis and I select this face, well, you can make an axis that way. If you have any problems making an axis, I'm going to delete what I just made. You also can choose, and, and you have to do this on the solid, not on a sketch in a Libre choose from my solid body two vertexes and that also will make the same axis so hopefully if you have problems making an axis or a plane that can help you get unstuck we'll choose our axis we'll choose our yz center plane and i'll add a negative 45 plane and i'll stagger between positive and negative values on that so i can visually differentiate a little bit easier which plane is which I'll activate a 2D sketch, and I just care, I'll even reset my view so I can look from the underside. Maybe I can make some bomb-looking fins, right? I think they tend to come up. Kind of extend far back. Like that. That kind of looks like it goes on maybe a World War II bomb or something. And it doesn't look like it's going to intersect with anything, so we'll extrude with a 5 thou mid plane fin, just like that. And we can go with a circular pattern. Uh, we'll pattern this feature around this axis. And we'll say, all right. 
Just like that. Very, very nice. This is, of course, just making up weapons as I go. <laughs> but it sure is fun. All right, next. Maybe we can get even more creative on the last one. So there's our plane running right through the middle. We're going to activate a 2D sketch on that. Maybe this time I'll use a spline. Maybe it'll come up and this just gives us the flexibility of being able to make something that's organic and not a constant curvature, right? This would be kind of a weird looking weapon, probably. We're going to go from here to here, horizontal, draw a line, deactivate, and we'll revolve. We'll choose our axis here. Yeah, so that is more of a unique looking body on that. And you could probably make a really wavy, strange, unique body with this spline if you wanted to. You could probably have this point, you know, well, of course, of course that happens. So I'll anchor here. You know, you could have something like that <laughs> where it looks strange. Look how strange that looks, that body. Well, regardless, I can use the same technique to make an axis. Well, let's see if, uh, if I try to make an axis with this face, it will not let me, right? So this is an example when I can use that other technique to choose a vertex on the front and a vertex on the rear, and it gives me a defined axis. So that's an example of how to use that technique. I'll highlight my axis, choose plane, and highlight my other reference. This time it'll be my plane here, negative 45 degrees, apply. We'll close that, select my plane, and activate a 2D sketch. I'll reset my view to go to the other side. And maybe on this very strange looking missile, I'll highlight this end to be reference. Maybe I'll just do very, very long fins since it looks kind of funny anyways. But you know, I think an arc might look even better. So I'll make an arc there to there. We'll go with a tangent. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll uh, deactivate, extrude, We'll have to go mid-plane and viewing from the back. Well, that needs to be taller now that I look at it, right? And that should be easy. That certainly is a funny looking missile with such long fins and everything, but it's a made up weapon, so why not? Now, let's see if uh, Circular Pattern will recognize this feature, right? So I say Circular Pattern, I choose my center as this face, and of course it doesn't, so I'll choose my axis that I've defined instead, and I have a nice uh, four-fin missile here. <laughs> Maybe that'll be a fuel tank or something, because <laughs> that does look pretty funny. Let's save. Now let's do a mirror function, right? So if I choose my original extrusion up here,
I'll be extrusion 56. I'm going to choose to mirror. And I want my mirror plane to be the YZ plane. And then from extrusion 56, we've made that tip there. And then extrusion 60 was those fins. And then extrusion, or feature pattern, right? We pattern our fins there. And oh, I have to uh, highlight here, of course. So 57, we've added that in. And then extrusion 60, feature pattern. Extrusion 62, where's those uh, like missile mounts? Revolution 66 was the body of the missile. There's the fin, the pattern of the fins, the next missile, the fin, the pattern of the fins, the next missile, the fin, and the pattern of the fins. So that should be everything. And we have successfully mirrored everything, right? Huge time saver. Can you imagine trying to do that all over again and trying to match up all those dimensions and everything? <laughs> so um, I think I've gone on a bit. I'll uh, pick this up in the next video. I want to cover a few final details and the fillets. Um, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next one.